What are some of the craziest experiences of your life and death? The other day I brought my dead cat back from the dead. Um, that was a pretty powerful day. Do the dead blush? The dead do blush. The, however, one must define the word blush. So if blush is a reaction of the body, then the dead may or may not actually blush because they actually may or may not have a body. But the goddamn rigor mortis said but that too. the blush experience emotionally, I think, is absolutely expressed by the dead. What sort of experience or invocation feelings do you get when you perform or create music? There's certain times when I feel like there's certain songs I can't play, but I almost always do play them when I feel that way. Because I feel if I can't play it right there, energetically there's something that's telling me I need to really play it. Or it's telling me I shouldn't play it because it might matter that I do play it, meaning that it might be appropriate to play. And sometimes I feel like I can, might not even make it through the song. Greetings in such disaster. Here we go again with another episode of Castle Cats. Greetings and such disaster. Tonight we present to you an exclusive interview with a friend to the darkness and light, Giotto Harrison of Blush Coffin. Welcome. Thank you for joining us here tonight. Thank you for having me. So how have you been? How was uh, the realms of the outer limits or what not? <laughs> yeah, pretty good. You know, um, energy flows whether we uh, want it to or not. And so sometimes I take a ride and sometimes I direct the directions. It's a good way to go about it. It's like surfing the madness of it all and controlling it. I keep spiraling in and out of control recently and I'm like, wait a minute. You released EP Holocene on Halloween. Do you care to discuss that? Um, so Holocene, the EP, was, uh, came about from the title track Holocene, which I originally wrote uh, on Halloween. Uh, it was the night I was going to go out, yeah, but there really wasn't anything exciting to do that night. Um, no really great offerings or parties. Uh, so I decided to write a song just before going out. I figured I'd write a song and post it. Halloween also being my birthday, I thought that would be really kind of neat. And the full EP released on Halloween. Um, well, technically it released on November 1st because my distributor missed the drop date. Ah, uh, we don't have uh, Nobody's going to know unless they were like, wait a minute. Yeah, it's out now. So we'll pretend like it was Halloween. Yeah, so it's out. It's on Spotify and iTunes and Amazon and like, all places. That song, Hollow Scene, which was poignant at the time because it kind of related to the, the way in which we look for a close connection with our clique and our friends at parties and at, at dance clubs and so on and so forth, but it's never really that realized. We're very separatists in our congregational experiences. So that song kind of typifies for me the scene at musically and, and going out um, and how it can be rather hollow. This was something that was being talked about the other day actually. It's like a People come together off like common ground, but it's almost like partially like escapism, and then yeah, I don't know, like the the lack of connection you're talking about, or like the void, or the we all want close connections. Um, for some reason, you know, in our society and sociologically, uh, uh, we just really haven't evolved to really have those situations. Um, we like to think that we're having a great time, but a lot of the times we're actually just lonely individuals amongst a pool of many. Um, and it's a psychological issue that I think is uh, more profound in today's times than ever. Um, especially while today we believe we're 
more evolved than we ever have been. But you think much of that's because of people getting wrapped up in like the image, or they're trying to like present themselves, or they're afraid of like uh, exposing their true like identities or something like that, or like they're, they're shutting themselves off from. Oh, shutting! Not only I think we are shutting ourselves. Yeah, I think we're shutting ourselves off. Absolutely. I'm not really sure that we're afraid to show our true identity as much as it is that we're afraid of being judged, of who we are, and even more so who we aren't. So you know, we create a facade and we wear our facade, which is much why Holocene was pointed to me because of the fact that it's a costume-based. Uh, day in which I feel it's kind of the one day that we're allowed to actually get out of costume, right? So all the other days we're in costume, and on Halloween we can actually then invoke something that's actually transcends the 364 costumes that we wore the year before. Or through self-revealed to the mask. Sort of, yeah. Kind of remind me of that, uh, the, the Dead Kennedy songs, like, uh, about the... The clown on Halloween. It's Halloween. Let's all go out tonight in our costume. We'll all be there to parade around and scare. a long history of musical endeavors. You play many instruments. What got you started with Blush Coffee? For many years I've played music uh, in other people's bands, being a supportive instrumentalist, um, playing often many instruments in a band to fill in those parts that, say, a band would have uh, recorded a record and they have all these parts that they can't do because there's not enough people in the band. or be the person that actually kind of just adds that little melody or rhythm that, that glues everything together and although that was exciting, Blush Coffin was more of an experiment of playing with a bunch of different instruments in a live manner to, to, to make a live composition um, with my experience of music. The name Blush Coffin, why? Why Blush Coffin? It started out with like, essentially this large DJ coffin full of micro synthesizers and some that I had made and modified and, and purchased as well. I just started to call it the blush coffin. And the idea is that I would make these live compositions, sometimes even live free versing vocals, and I was hoping to invoke this blush response from the audience. What can we expect next from blush coffin? Currently working on other music projects, um, my, my modular project, Animus Modular. Um, which should have some releases fairly soon, as well as another project that um, is very different and it actually has no name at the moment. What was, uh, maybe you just played under a name, it was, I don't know if you remember, it was probably like four or five years ago at Hush Club. I, I saw you do like an improvised, like... That was probably Blush Coffin. If it's the one I'm thinking, thinking of, that might have even been the first Blush Coffin live performance. I just remember thing was really cool and then you told me it was like improvised and I was like, well, I have no fucking idea. Right, well see that's kind of the sad reality of it is it's like, on one hand it's this beautiful thing because it's improvised. If you don't know that it's improvised, like I'll take that as a compliment sometimes. I mean one time I was playing uh, with the Animus Modular actually and, and this woman walked up to me and asked me if I had any Latin music. 
I looked at my system and I thought, well, I guess she thinks I'm a DJ. Ah! Uh, and, and so I had to take that as a compliment. <laughs> I feel like I have to catch all of your shows because it's going to be completely different each time. It's going to be completely different. In fact, with Blush Coffin, so far, and I hope to keep this up forever, there will always be at least one new song. Each show. Blush, every show. Every Beautiful. show. You have stated before that you practice the Dharma. Would you care to talk about that? I practice many Dharmas. Um, I'm not Buddhist per se. Uh, I consider myself more of a theosophist when it comes to the esoteric studies. Um, kind of comparative study of all esoteric studies and then finding those things that really are the cleanest, fastest, easiest way for me to look at energy and deal with energy to clear energy to, and to allow me to be present. So with the dharmas that I practice, they were um, given to me by a living Buddha who empowered me to do these certain dharmas. And I was part of a small group of some of the first non-disciple Buddhists uh, to be given these dharmas um, and empowered to do these dharmas. Because this living Buddha from the esoteric Chinese lineage of Buddhism had decided that it was more important for more people to have these uh, Dharma practices because he saw that big heavy things were going to come in our near future. So he found it more important to just have more people be able to do these versus just disciples. Um, so I was invited to do that and did so. and. They're pretty heavy, amazing dharmas that allow for superhero type stuff. Just honestly, really amazing stuff. I think we need a giant energetic tidal wave to, uh, to you know, it's, it's through major catastrophe that we as humans finally come together. And it's only Humanity a brief is so stupid. moment. That's what it takes. That's what it takes. But it's only this brief it. moment. So if a huge, 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 you know, like, uh, devastating thing happens on the planet, maybe, maybe that will be the push that we really need. You know, it might mean a bunch of people die. I don't know. I, it might. If that's what it takes for our evolution to move forward. I hey, mean, maybe you guys are lucky enough to be one of them. I think about it every day when that asteroid coming. No, we're going to all get wiped out. Yeah. Carpe diem. So there's so are there people out there who like have these like abilities to try to help with what you're saying, what they're saying there needs to be people prepared to deal with this or prevent it? Prevent it, extinguish it, um, and then of course to heal, right? We need healers on this planet. Um, people that can actually really help to allow us to be present as humans in our human body um, to experience and express really so that we don't have all of this stuff that we're talking about all these inhibitions and these fears I mean these are all lies and we all know they're lies we talked about it it's, we all agree that there's these giant lies but yet we still continue to to live in the fear and purport the lies
friends, it is I once again, Joe Ghidorah Ghoul. And tonight on Ask Ghoul a Question, we are here with... Tyrone. <laughs> Tyrone! Wait a minute. Didn't I already ask you before? Mm, Minerva that <laughs> witch. Might have a little chat with her. But anyways, Tyrone, what will you be discussing with us today? Pretty much Can more I... of the crazy paranormal activity that I've been experiencing. Excellent, excellent. So tell us, what tale have you for us tonight? Well, I got so many of them. Um, well, we are on a time show. <laughs> well, there was a time where it was uh, I had this thing with hands. hands. And for some apparent reason, I will always see like thousands and thousands of hands. Like I go into the bathtub, I would mm. see hands. There were Big moments, ones or little ones? No, little ones, but it'd be like thousands of them all over my body, like hands pulling me through. Kind of like similar on Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, with that on part, I think it was like part one when she was in the bathtub and Freddie Hands came up. It was uh, like this. Yes, but it's the dead. old clock. Oh, yes. Right, that but was it's dead. Such a yeah, he was like about to really grab her by the pussy with that. <laughs> you know, he really was about to grab it, but anyway. <laughs> um, well, Freddie is a bit of a pervert, but what can I say? <laughs> But anywho, uh, there was tons of hands that would like reach up for me and there was even a moment like, because I'm from Chicago and I came to LA, but the thing is, is that I was lazy, I didn't really want to buy a regular bed, so I had an air mattress. And then all of a sudden, I feel hands like pulling up and voices and stuff and sometimes it would pin me down to the floor. Mm. And even when I wake up, I would still feel them moving all over my body, kind of like ants or bumblebees, like almost like insects, like an itchy sensation. Mm. And I So was, there was nothing pleasurable about these hands? Oh whatsoever. no, I wasn't getting no orgasm from it, mm. you know, none of that stuff. I mean, I could have maybe got some Vaseline, some lemon juice and played my own little party. You know, rain man party. But anywho, <laughs> um, you know, I decided to just get a regular bed. And after I got my regular bed, the hand sensation and the hands that I saw disappeared. You know, the spiritual woman said it's because I was laying too close to the surface of the ground, like where the spirits were, you know, underground. So she said if I get something that's much higher, they can't reach to me. Hmm. So. so it sounds to me, so the spirits were reaching for you. They must want something from you. What do you suppose it is that they wanted from you? I don't know, maybe my figgy pudding, you know. Mm. How is that figgy pudding? Well, two piece and a biscuit. Mm. So mm. quite interesting. I might want to try some. Say, <laughs> I do quite like those glasses. You mind if I uh, try them on? Yeah, sure, there? absolutely. Go ahead. Well, thank you, sir. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yes, these are quite nice. They fit you. They oh, fit you really well. Well, thank you, yes. I wanted to try them first as well because I hate to see them get damaged. Oh, why would you say that? Because of this. What are some of the craziest experiences of your life and death? The other day I brought my dead cat back from the dead. Um, that was a pretty powerful day and experience. So what happened to them? Well... She died, and I brought her back, but then her spirit told me that she was, in fact, ready, that it was her time to go. Um, and then we were able to say goodbye, and then she passed. Goodbyes um, are important. And then, but probably the most important day of my life was the day that I was able to save my then best friend's life. That even though things have changed, is uh, between us that will forever remain my most important and profound day. It's very heavy stuff. It's extremely intense. Must be in debt to you, like uh, for doing so, like infinitely, regardless. Of Actually, it's kind of the reverse. Is it? Karmically, I'm more responsible for them. Oh, because you, maybe they were... And everything to... that happens from then on. Because you altered, I, I, I remember this conversation yeah. now. They have no karmic debt to me. Absolutely not. But I have a karmic debt to them and to the world that they live in. Life is pretty fucking wacky. Absolutely. That's pretty uh, amazing though, regardless, like... It's like, I mean, I'm not even like involved with that at all, but like, I don't know, it's just beautiful. 
Have you ever had any paranormal experiences? Well, the three I decided to... Besides those, yeah, so those are totally... You know, just ones that would sure, be sure, more right. out of the ordinary from yeah, regular right, right. daily life. Uh, fairly regularly, really. Um, I, you know, really, paranormal is kind of an interesting way to look at things, because the reason that we consider it paranormal is because we haven't accepted it as reality. But in reality, there's esoteric things that are paranormally like happening regularly and we somehow societally and in our upbringing have been raised to believe them to be paranormal instead of normal um, and you can look at esoteric happenings and I like to kind of use this one analogy as a way to really kind of make you think I hope it makes me think about the paranormal and that is when you have two or more women living together, their menstrual cycles sync up. And this is paranormal. But it's not. We know that this is a fact. It's natural connectivity. It's a natural connection between these humans that happens in some intrinsic way. It's almost like playing music together. It's like you just get in sync, sort of. It's like we're going to play the same note and beat, we're going to like bleed at the same time, or like... I don't know, not to remind me, like, centuries ago, every time I had to go use the litter box, my mother would be like, I need to use the litter box every single fucking time. It's almost something similar. But anyways, back to the point. Yeah, like, yeah. I guess my thing. question really is, anytime one has a paranormal experience, I would hope one might look at it for a moment and just say, was it actually paranormal or was it normal? Because it probably was actually normal, really. Well, everything's yeah. sort of, like, natural. If, if it exists... It's reality, but I guess like paranormal is just because it doesn't jive with like our culture's like outlook on like how everything has to be like this type of scientific or whatever or like like you said it's like not accepting of it. Really. Sure, but science has come. I mean, you know, with quantum physics, oh, quantum it's totally theory, linking up now. Finally, we're finally getting somewhere there. I mean, quantum quantum it's physics beautiful. completely shows us that the intrinsic connection between all things in the universe. The whole like string theory. Or well, just everything. You take two mechanical clocks, you put them on a wall together, they're going to start to click together because they have to. You take one thing that's related to another thing and you spread it to the furthest points of the universe and you turn this one, it's going to affect that one. And, you know, and not only has it been theory, it's been theorized forever, but it's starting to be proven and actually become real. Uh, understanding so so I hope that this it could be part of our emotional spiritual physical evol evolution once the quantum uh, physicists are able to put all this in reality as far as like uh, existentialism in the like uh, science because the whole thing like so we're constantly discovering learning truths and then false or it seems like we found the truth and then it sort of change or it keeps extending sort of and then, like you said, like the theorizing, the way we are now perceiving this, so that's like also creating the reality of what we are discovering, sort of like simultaneously, like a mutual between reality and fiction, since it's sort of the same thing in some level in between, you know what I mean? Oh, sure, absolutely. Well, I mean, you know, a, a good example of that is that most of the technology we have right now is, you know, comes from science, science fiction uh, TV shows and Star movies. Trek, television. yeah. You know, and then we and then we want these things, so then we go and we seek them out and create them, and that is the truth of what anyone can do with anything about themselves. So the moment you actually recognize the thing that it is that you want, if you want it enough, you'll work to get it. And unfortunately, our shortcoming is to tell us that we, based on our fears shouldn't have those things. So that's why most of us don't succeed, whatever that may be. It's, it's only our own doing, really. It's, it's, it's interesting. I was just talking about this with Gangsta the G Ghost, about like, like I, it's like I understand that I know a lot of these things, but I'm not putting into practice. I'm like retaining this like negative, like everything's fucked. Like I haven't broken these bad habits or these patterns or these cycles, like what's wrong with me or whatever. And then just falling back into the like, 
feeling doomed, so to speak, or some shit. Any last words, death threats, or midnight snack recipes for the ghouls in TV land? I would say, yeah, when, when experiencing somebody performing their art or their music, uh, or expressing that, like, have a moment to realize whether it's your experience that you're having or are you experiencing what's happening through the gauze and the fears of what others might think of you or the influence of what they would think. Is it your truth? Do you fully have the availability to experience it for yourself? And that's true with anything in any day that you might experience with anything. Uh, I feel we all often speak words that we recite, that we've heard about opinions or decisions of whether we like something or not, or actually someone else's decision. Is it your decision and is it your truth? That's the biggest thing I could say in any given day for anyone, is how much of what we say is your own truth. Humanoids and pink candy hell demons. Blush coffin. Be sure to check out his EP, Holocene, on the Interspider web. Thank you for tuning inside out. I now drop you off to be babysat by the Vacky Witch. What? No, nothing. I don't know what you're talking about, Count. I don't know.